Hey guys, welcome back. This is Amy Chicken. Let's open this package. Boo! Wow, this took one day to get to my door. Ah, Amazon are pretty quick. After making the previous mini PC review, Ace PC got in touch and they said like, Hey, do you want to make a review for us? And I'm like, okay. As always, we'll keep it non-biased as possible. As a kid, the first PC I had was an Acer PC. We can see where Ace PC get their inspiration from. Personally, I care more about what's in the box than outside. Anyway, let's take a look. Ooh, a nice matte black. We've got a nice sticker here. Yay, stickers. If we look around, it looks like a fairly neat unit. Click the on and off button, and enough connectivity options. All in all, it's not too heavy, it's not too light. It's just about right. Other things in the box, we get this warranty card. And, uh, manual. Here we have the power adapter. It's quite an interesting one, this. It's actually modular. So depending on the region that you're in, you'll get a different connector. I'm in Japan here, so it's the US type. But remember, whenever you order an electrical product, make sure you mention the plug that you need. Also in the box is a HDMI cable. And at the very bottom, a VESA mount. Yeah! So let's take a look around the box. Front is fairly plain. On the side we have a power switch, micro USB port, two USB 3s and a USB 2. On the back we have DC in, USB 2, two HDMI ports, LAN, headphone socket and a locky thing. And here's the fun side. This is a side that we play Wally -E on. On the bottom we have the two holes for the VESA mounts and we also have the two and a half inch drive bay. It's held together with two screws. How big is this unit? Let's check her out. For today's size comparison, we're gonna use an Umaibo. A very tasty stick. Yes. The Ace PC AK1 is the length and width of a tasty stick. Yummy. Quick look at the specs. The one we have in for review is the 8128 model. To get this running, we'll need a monitor or a TV with HDMI, and then a USB keyboard or trackpad. We're going to make full use of this VESA mount. Just line up these two holes. Bang. It's like a little backpack. If you want it thinner, you can even unclip the hard drive caddy. Mm. Once we have it hugging the back of the monitor, we need to connect our wires. Unfortunately, they're at the top, so spaghetti. It's not very tidy. When it's powered on, we get a nice blue light. And then when it's sleeping... On the first boot, we're greeted with some questions from Windows. It's a very simple process. We will just choose our language, region. Within five minutes, we're up and running. This means the system will be fairly bare bones, so not much junk to slow it down. No AOL trials here. Pretty clean, right? Quick check for malware. CPU Z. HW info shows that the temperatures are fairly cool. The computer itself is completely silent unless it's pushed, and even then it's very quiet. Under load, the fan sounds like this. A pleasant surprise. Here are a few benchmarks. A great resource for free software is ninite.com. 
check anything you want to install, and then hit go. Automatically installs everything to your computer. We can do work with LibreOffice with their versions of Word and Excel. Or we can go online shopping. This little box can also handle YouTube at 4K. Even when we hook up two screens, we can multitask. For those who stream via TeamViewer, this may be a great option. With this box in your living room, we can stream from a more powerful gaming PC. I'm running this here via Wi-Fi with little issue. For a more secure connection, we can always use the 1 gigabit Ethernet LAN. Not everyone has a gaming PC, so let's check out how well games perform on this box, unaided. Among Us. Here's some Streets of Rage 4. Pinball FX2. Moving to Pinball FX3, we can see that it's struggling a little. XCOM Chimera Squad. Uh. Moving to emulation, here's Dead or Alive 2 on Redream. And Fight K2. If you want to play arcade games online with friends, get this software, it's great. We can use a 2.5 inch SSD within this drive bay. If we prepare it with Batocera, we can create an arcade gaming setup. Doing this, you don't need to install anything onto Windows, which can keep the main system light enough for work. We just need to change the boot option in our BIOS, and then we're good to go. The following footage is all taken from within Batocera. Let's see how well the Ace PC AK-1 can perform. There's Road Rash for 3DO. Turrican 2 on the Commodore Amiga. Sonic 2 XL for the Mega Drive. Saturn Bomberman for the... Saturn. Segarelli performs terribly. Soul Calibur, Dreamcast. <laughs> Daytona USA. Graphics here are set to low. Is Capcom vs SNK2 for now on me. 
Neo Geo, back to the Colosseum. A Thomas Wade. Daytona USA 2 on the Model 3. F-Zero X, N-64. Cruising USA. This is one of them N-64 games that are difficult to run. F-Zero GX. Nintendo GameCube. On the PlayStation, we have Tekken 3. And one of my favorites, out on 2006, Coast to Coast. We have mostly full speed here, with the occasional hiccup. Wipe out here for the PSP. Same story, we get full speed for most of the time, and then sometimes it slows down. Oh. While most of the games work really well on MAME, 3D games such as Tekken 3 do chug a little. Killer Instinct 2, on the other hand, works really well. Solid 60 FPS. And here is Death Smiles. As it's a mini PC, we can also get Mugen running. Scum VM titles such as Full Throttle you know what might look, look really well here. Nose. What? The bar. <gasps> now don't mess around with me. All right, all right. MS DOS titles such as GTA work fine here too. All right, let's check out what's inside. After unclipping the caddy, all we have are these four screws, and it opens up fairly easily. We have here the M2 drive. Over here we have a power connector. You may be able to use that for something. And down the bottom we have some ribbon connectors. Here we have the heatsink fan. But if you want to upgrade anything in this unit, there's not much you can do really. What you see is what you get. So let's move on to the pros and cons. We get a full version of Windows 10 Pro, the fan is very quiet, stays cool, can pop in two monitors, and the case is transformable. Unfortunately, it's a fairly weak CPU, and the VESA holes are upside down. So, who is this good for? It'd be good for families or students, you want to do web browsing, shopping online, or even using Office. For those that want to play arcade games like Killer Instinct, or even want to use Fightcade on the cheap, yeah, this would be awesome. For casual retro gamers, this will be okay. If you want to play PC games on Steam, look elsewhere, this is shite. However, this box gets the Hanamara Award for streaming. Stream your multimedia, your games, your work, your whatever. It might not be the most powerful box on the market, but as more people are being asked to work from home, this box can fit that niche. If you liked what you saw, Please hit the likey and subscribey. This has been Emu Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you in the next video.